Hello, welcome to a test flow how to video. So in the previous video, what we've seen, we've seen how to create a new job from scratch. Uh, like I was mentioning, we we can um, let the user define the test IDs, um, you know, uh, of the job that has been created, or from the server we can predefine this so the user won't have to do it from the field. So basically, if I want to add IDs and more information about the job. Uh, itself what I can do I can enter the job that I just defined and I can specify uh, the thing exactly the thing that the, the, the technician will be doing let's say the type of tests uh, all the all the IDs that are assigned to a specific to, to the specific job so I can define all this in advance we have two ways where we can uh, how we can define a new, uh, the test IDs in the, within the job we can do it from a small wizard that I will demonstrate in a few, uh, few seconds, or we can do it from a CSV. So if you have the IDs coming from another system, you could put them into a, a CSV file and let the, uh, the testful server create automatically the, uh, the IDs based on the CSV. But today what we will review is um, you know, how to do it from the small wizard that we have created in the testful application. So basically, we can support up to you know six different type of uh, measurement for a specific job or measurement or task. Okay, so basically, here I will be defining uh, a, a job, you know, a basic IOM job. I will also be doing, let's say, a FIP job for that one, and then we also support generic tasks. So basically, here you can have tasks that are not necessarily related to a test. Uh, but the user can still, you know, select if the task was done, not done, or if the task there's a pass fail associated to that specific task, you can, you can, you can, you know, set the pass fail accordingly as well. So this one, I will simply, you know, uh, have a generic one which is done, not done, and then I could, I could specify the sub test subtype. So basically, the user will know exactly what needs to be done so in this case i can just call this uh, this step uh, clean and then you know it could be clean the connector or it could be anything here it's free free form text so basically you can you can uh, enter whatever you want once you have defined the uh, you know the test type that need to be uh, associated to that job you can then associate the ids okay so basically i would be doing i don't know today uh, for that job it's going to be let's say fiber uh, or I have a cable it could be few cables let's say I'm gonna have cable zero one and I'm gonna have uh, it will go until I don't know if I have five cable I can select the separator so to better document my my job so I can select the fiber ID so basically here I know it's gonna be fiber zero one up to fiber 10 so you see as I go it builds the list of the IDs that I will uh, need to be uh, testing for that specific job so here I could also have you know uh, alpha numeric alpha character as well so you see there as I uh, enter the uh, these extra the extra character here the system knows what I want to do. So basically, here it's gonna um, it's gonna give me you know five cables, and within each cable, I will have all these fiber IDs. So it's gonna start at uh, fiber zero one A, and then after that, it's gonna be it's gonna go at fiber zero one B because it, you know it's gonna alternate between these increment and so on and so on. See now, I have a job that have 100 identifiers and I can select the, the separator and I can add a, you know extra extra information here like location A, I could specify the location if I wanted the uh, the user to know a specific location so I can you see there it's just added at the end of the uh, Identifier. So basically, these identifier is what you you already know in the IOLM, FIP, or OTDR, OTDR application. These can be custom or they can be you know predefined from the server, like I'm, I'm showing here. So basically, here I have basic cable IDs. But if I wanted to name this you know port ID, that's something the system supports. So once you import these file into a, let's say fast reporter, the, the identifier will follow accordingly. 
So this is how you can define the, uh, the different IDs for a specific job here. So basically once I'm ready, I can simply create and what the system will do, we will create, let's say like a, a job with all these, um, these IDs, but also it will show how the, uh, the, the, the job layout will be in the instrument. So basically here we have the identifiers that we have created, all the cable IDs, and then we have, you know, the test type associated to that job. So basically in the next capsule, what we will demonstrate is all that job will look like into the instrument when the user logs in into the system and come to, uh, to the point where he wants to execute that job.